begin the current Dav, Masech the Seit of Dav Chafalaf. We begin several lines down at the top of the Yamad. The Gemara continues the halacha of our previous Mishnah, which we spoke about this idea of the drinking of the Mesaita, and that there are at times chusim that the woman has that will be toilet, that will suspend it, and therefore she won't get the punishment immediately. I think we're going to discuss what merit will the woman have that will be toilet for such a long period of time. Shurz Kostlaz, Rekazak, and Chesko, turn to B'dafachayim, Fishing in today's daf. Some of the things discussed in today's daf are, like we mentioned, the schos that is effective in delaying a seita's death, the effects of Torah and other mitzvahs regarding magna umatzla. Those are two categories we're going to talk about regarding protecting and saving, as we'll explain exactly what does that refer to. Also, the famous teaching that a woman receives a portion of the Torah of her sons and her husband, ba'agro de mekari and masanya banayu, this that they have their sons learning chumash and mishnayis. But not the gavrayu at the asim bebedrash. Wait for the husband to come back from base medrash, and that they get half of the reward of the husbands. The discussion regarding chayv on the lamin is bid the If a person is obligated to teach his daughter Torah, and we discuss that of a chassid shaita, a foolish chassid who thinks he's acting chassidus, and really he's a fool in what he's trying to do. So we begin the current daf daf chafal. Seven lines down at the top of the yamid. The Mishnah said. That there could be a schus that could be titled for one year. There could be a schus that could be titled for two years. And then you could even have, as the Gemara quotes, you could have a schus that could be titled even up to three years. So the Gemara says, schus de mai. What type of merit could protect her so much that this woman who is mezana, uh, ish, it will suspend her death for three years? So the Gemara is looking, obviously, for the big one. What's the big ones? So Elam is chus de taira. If you think the merit of taira, which she was learning taira, what's bigger than learning taira? But the problem is, but she's not commanded to do and then to get reward, because it says in the taira, the bulamadzim oisim is b'neichem, which she says, below is b'neisechem. And since, since she's not commanded, so you can't say her reward will be as great as someone who is mitzvah voice, who is commanded to learn Torah and does. I mean, for us to learn, to come to a shir, to learn to have yemi, oh, it's a shang shver, it's a tirdis, it's, it's, it's a difficulty. So then you get the great reward. But the women, yeah, women love learning Torah. You know, you go make a shir, you have 17 women, you have three men, like two men that roll in, right? So uh, what, what could be the great reward that they have? It can't be that of Torah. Says the Gemara, no, el eschus de mitzvah. Must be the merit of a mitzvah. Says the Gemara, schus the mitzvah, the reward of a mitzvah, mi migna kolehai? You think it protects so much? But Tanya will learn the Braisa that we contrast what Taira does and what mitzvah does. And, 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 and mitzvah is not as big as Taira. Because the Braisa says, Azud Dogaz Rabbanachem Rabbi It says a famous passage like in Mishli, Kiner mitzvah, because the mitzvah is the candle, the Torah or, and the Torah is the light. So, tell our customers a mitzvah in there. The pasuk is, is is creating a connection between comparing the mitzvah to the lamp, and the Torah to the actual light. So, what does that mean to say? It's a mitzvah in there for comparing the mitzvah to the lamp. to tell you maner in the megino, or some have the gears say in the The lamp is limited to the amount of wax or oil, whatever it is that it has. So, it's only for a certain amount of time. Af mitzvah in the beginning of the So mitzvah also only takes for a certain amount of time. When we compare the Torah to light, Lemlucha to tell you, Ma'ar, as long as you have the light, is Megan Lailam. Light is always protecting it. It's that, that's something that it's, that's the mitzvah is always there. Af Torah Megan Lailam. So to Torah is also going to protect forever. As we find, Vaim the Pasi says before this, and we say this by a Siyam, by a Masechta, we say, Bisalechacha, that when you go in it, meaning the ways of the Torah, Tantcha Eisach. It will lead you, begoimer, etc., where the Pasik says that, as the Gemara is going to expound, when you lay down, it will safeguard you. When you get up, he says, it's what you speak about. So the Gemara explains this Pasik. When you're going, it will lead you. That's in this world. When you lay down, it will protect over you. This is when you die. When you get up, it's going to be your speech, meaning it's going to be a melitz yosher for you to mention all your schusim, it's going to talk for you as lost lava in the future. Says the Gemara, Mashal la'odom shoyimahalach be'ishan lai l'vafele. This can be compared to a person that's going in a dark and finstere nacht, dark and, 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 and overcast night. Now he's afraid of the thorns, he's afraid of the ditches, from the thistles, from the wild animals, 
Menalistin from the bandits. He's going out there, mamish like the b'maisim Bal Shem. You're out in the forest in the dark. You don't know what's out there. He doesn't know which way to go. When he gets a torch of light, oh, oh, oh. That's similar to a person who merits to perform a mitzvah. So it does something for the person. It'll save him from the thorns, from the pits, from the thistles, meaning it's going to save him from some of the punishments. That's when you do a mitzvah. But, even though now he has a, a torch, you can see where he's going, Epis, he's not going to bump into the thorns. But he's still afraid of the wild animals. I'm going to list him from the bandits. Because they usually travel at night time. Maybe he's going to bump into them, like it says. <speaking in Hebrew> we say there's a Baruch Nafshi, that you have all these wild animals and all these bandits, so a torch is not going to save you from them. Moreover, the any day of Ezer Derech Mahalach, it doesn't even know where he's going. Once is the break of dawn, which also that's a reference to someone who merits to learn Torah. Nitzel Mechayera. Now he's saved from the wild animals, or when he them from the bandits, because they only hang around during nighttime. Once it starts getting light time, they're off the roads. Meaning, the metaphor is telling us when you learn Torah, you are saved from sin and from Yisurin, from affliction. Okay. But still, doesn't know where he's going. Meaning, that maybe his Yetzirah will force him to stop learning. And he's going to get punishments. But once he reaches to the crossroads, and that's where he recognizes his path. Oh, also over here, the reference is when he reaches the day of death, and he has not separated himself from Teich until the day that he dies, then he's saved from them all. As This is how the Gemara is going to explain the Bryce that we just mentioned, we were saying it with Rashi, that's the, what the nimshal is, that, oh, then he's saved from everything, and he knows where he's going, and there he's going to be able to live his nitzchis. That's one pshat. Now, Dabba Achar, another pshat in this pasik that we mentioned, is, what's the difference? Avera mechaba. Uh, an Avera extinguishes the reward of mitzvah, of a mitzvah. But the ain Avera mechaba, but a sin does not extinguish the reward for someone who toils in Torah before that. Chenema, like it says the pasik in Shir Hashirim. Mayim rabim, the abundant waters cannot extinguish the love, which refers to Teira. Why? Because the Pasuk previously in Shir Hashim, it says, Hiviyani el hayayin. He brings me into the house of the wine. And he like celebrates on me love. Now, Yayin is the gematria of Said, which is the secret, which refers to Teira. So what we see from here is, that mitzvah doesn't protect so much like Torah. Either, like we said, in the mashal of Bisalecha Tantra Isaac, that mitzvah only does that much, Torah does that much more, or like we see over here, that an an Aver could extinguish the reward of a mitzvah, but it cannot extinguish the reward of Torah. So the question is, this woman that she's having a schus that's been Torah for three years, what type of schus? Tama Torah can't be because she's not mitzvah vayza. A mitzvah? A mitzvah is not so big like Torah. It can't save for such a long period of time. So what is this chus? So Amr of Yisuf, Rabbi Yisuf says, the truth is what protects her for the Yisurin, which is really what the situation of the Saita is, even by mitzvah. So didn't we just say that it's not Megan? We said that only Torah is going to be Megan forever. But mitzvah is only lifi show. When you do a mitzvah, it protects you for that time period. So how could we say that it's going to be for three years? So on that, Rabbi Yis is coming to say, when it says that mitzvah is not megan, all that means to say it doesn't protect you from sinning. It just means that the Yetzirah will not force you to do an Aveira, as he explains. Mitzvah, be'idna de asigba, when you're currently engaged in performing a mitzvah, meaning that's what we said, lefisha, we said we compared it to a nair, to a lamp, which is only uh, temporary. Then it's magna, it protects from yusurin, umatzla, and it saves a person from the yitzahara, that he shouldn't stumble in sin. 
but when he's not currently engaged, meaning he finished the mitzvah and he's not doing it anymore, aguni magna, it protects him from punishment. It's just not going to save him from the Yitzhahara. So when we said in the Brisa that an Avera is Mechaba Mitzvah, that wasn't talking about that it's not going to protect him from Yisurin anymore. It just means from taking reward for the future. Oh, so the, it could be that the Saita did a big mitzvah that will save him for three years. I, I thought you told me that it's not, it's not going to protect you, only Lefisha, it's not going to help you for three years. No, that's only it's not going to save you from doing Avera. In the middle of Shokling Lulav, you're not going to come to say Loshan Hara. I mean, it'll protect you from a Navera Bishas Maisa. That's Matzla. That it won't do afterwards. But Magna, protect you from Yisurin, from Puranias, that it would do even for a later point in time. Whereas Taira, that's what contrasting Mitzvah and Taira. Taira is Beg Be'idna the Asigba, whether you're currently engaged in learning. Or Beg Be'idna the Asigba, well, you already had your share for the day, and you're, it's already 11 o'clock in the morning, and you're doing something else. Magna um Matzla. The limit of Taira, not only does it protect you from Yisurin, it also saves you from doing an Avera. That's the current interpretation of the Gemara to explain how the woman, the Saita, could have a schos Torah three years from a mitzvah, even though we said mitzvah is not as big as Taira. No, that was regarding matzla, to save from the Yitzhar's temptations. But regarding protecting? Yeah, the schos of a mitzvah would be equal to the Taira. But Maskebel Rabbi, Rabbi asks on this, he says, wait a second. Really? Is that how you're comparing? You're saying Torah will be magna matzla whether you're currently learning or you're not currently even learning? But I mean, if that's the case, what do you do with doig vachi teifel? These are two personalities at the times of David and Melech. Miloy aski Didn't they learn Torah? Amai lo alaihu. Why didn't they protect them from the Yitzhahara that caused them to sin and made them rasham gemurim? In other words, why didn't they save them from doing averes? You just told me that matzla, the Torah saves even when you're toiling it, even when you're not toiling in it. So then they shouldn't have been stumbled with the Yitzhahara. So El Amarava, rather, Rabina, Rava says that actually Taira, regarding Taira, Be'idna, the Asigba, when you currently engage in learning Taira, so Magna Matzla. It protects you from Yisurin and it saves you from doing Navera. Be'idna, the Loy Asigba, this is what he's changing, says so when you're not currently involved in your Shir in learning Taira, Aguni Magna, it will protect a person from Paranias, from Yisurin. But at Tzuli Lamatzli, right, it won't save him from the Yitzhahara, and that's how Doeg and Achitaifel, although they're big Tamid Chachamim, they did stumble and became Risham. Mitzvah, on the other hand, Bein Be'idna the Asigba, Bein Be'idna the Lo Yosigba, whether you're currently engaged in the Mitzvah, whether you're not currently engaged in the Mitzvah, Agune Magne will protect from Yisurim. Again, that's what we're trying to say from the Saita. She doesn't get the reward of Tamataira because she's not Mitzvah Isa. It must be some big Mitzvah that she did. It will protect even though she's not currently doing it. At Tzuli Lamatzli, it will never, however, save from doing an Avera, even when you're doing the mitzvah. So even when you're currently shakling the lulav, you still might go ahead and do another Avera and say Lashon Hara on somebody when you're middle of shakling the lulav. But Torah, that will do it. Be'idna the Asikba, or be magna, and will be matzla. So again, we're able to show the contrast between Torah that it's bigger, it's the, it's the Ur, and the mitzvah is just in there. But at the same time, we see that a mitzvah could protect even be'idna the loy asikba. So that's one shot in how it protects the woman. Ravina, he says, no, actually... What's, what's going to really protect the person? Only something as big as Taira. I, the comment you say, but what do you mean? Women are not commanded to do and learn Taira. So for them, they love learning Taira. They love hearing a shear and this and that. So how could it be such a big schus that it's going to save her for three years? Because although the women themselves are not commanded to learn Taira, but we're not talking about her own learning a Taira. This is what every seem, every drasha, every whatever talks about. It's because of the effort that she puts into her children and her husband that they learn Taira. It's not her own learning Taira. The agra and the reward, the mekarian, umasanyan, benayu, this that they put in the effort to get their children. And I think it would be appropriate. I was, uh, my, my, I was on my way to give the shit here. My wife's taking my son over there and getting the kids ready for school over there, right? Give a shout out, right? You know what I'm saying? What more appropriate than to go ahead? Everyone's wives, right? Whatever the situation is, all the years. Right? To bring them to Yeshiva that they learn Chumash and they learn Mishnayis. And the Nat Mahul they wait for their husbands that Rashi says they go to another city to learn Torah. I imagine contemporaries, people get very impatient. We are waiting for the husbands and the husbands out in Shul and he's learning the Shir. At the Asmim Bidrash until they come back from the Bismarck. Miloy Palgan Bahadayu. 
don't you think they split in half with us? So therefore, and that's actually the famous question of the Chida, he says, we know, as we're going to mention in a moment, Yisach Zavulan. The Zavulan takes half, and Yisach takes half. But the Gemara just told us right now that the women take half. So they say, husband's left with nothing. There's not the height. The Zavulan takes half. And, and the, and, the corner. What? He's left with the corner. No. He splits first with his wife, so he's got half. Then he splits with Yisach uh-huh. Zavulan. So he splits his half against Yisara in half. Right. Chidah says a different type of answer. But yeah, he, he, he says that the Zavun is going to take half, so you left with 50. And the woman takes the other half, which you gave away your half. That's what happens if he has two wives, and then he only has a third. Okay. So he says really everyone gets 100. That's what I, the way he says. But it's, it's, the place you do talk about it. But the point is, he says, don't they get half? And yeah, the women get half the reward, and therefore have nothing to do with their own money taira. They get the husbands and the kids, and that's how the woman, that the Saita, will be able to be protected for a period of up to three years. Now, just going back to a reference we had mentioned in the previous Moshul, in the Pasig Besalecha Tancha Isach, so it says he has a torch, it'll protect him for some things. Then he, it's daybreak, it'll protect him a little bit more. And then when he gets to the Prashas Drachim, Oh, then he knows where he's going. Then he's 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 nitzel mekulam. Says him, my prasha drachim. In other words, in the mushal, what are we considering when you con- come to the to the cross in the in the road? That you said the torch is the mitzvah, amud shacha is the teira. What is prasha drachim? What is the crossroads that's going to protect you? So Rav Chizdi says zet tamot chacham misa. This refers to someone who is a tamot chacham on the day that he dies, and you know that he never separated to a throw off from him the yoke of teira. It's a very important terminology that Rashi says because it's always the Ul HaTayra. It's not about necessarily how much you learn. It's the Ul HaTayra. That the person always had the yoke of Tayra. Such a person is considered having reached the Prashat Rachim and he's Nitzam Akulam. Another interpretation of Nachman Yitzchak says, This is someone who merits to have the fear of sin after he was Zechat to Tayra. Then he's safe from everything. Why? Very important also. The order also. Tayra teaches a person what he has to do. What he's not allowed to do, what he has to separate from. Yiras Chet will then stop him from chasing after his inclination because he's afraid of sin. But you have to first know what is sin and what's not. So you have to first learn halacha. You have to know, and I spoke about this by the Drush of this past Shabbos. See, halacha is, is esh. You have to know vos, vos, yeah, vos not. You think you know what, 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 what's right, what's wrong. You have no clue. As I, I quoted the Chaz Nishna in Sefer Mund Betachin and Perik Dal, where he talks about this, is that people think they're moral and righteous and, up, and, and justice. And, you don't, you don't even know. You know, you have to know vos, yav, vos, now. And then you have yiras chet. <laughs> okay, now you're saved from everything. That's the Prashat Jachim. Or another Prashat Mazot Jachim, says, Zet HaMachachim, this refers to a Talmudic scholar, the Solkel Eishmaitza Liba Dehel Chasav, that his Zeicha, that his learning will come out according to the right halacha. In other words, once it's the break of dawn, we said he's saved from the wild animals. Meaning, if he merits to learn Tyra, he's saved from the Yitzhahara and from sin. But... He still doesn't know which way to go. If he will merit that they will assist him from heaven, that his words will be accepted amongst his colleagues, that he could rule according to that locha and according to the just judgment. When he reaches the Prashash Drachim, in other words, when he merits to that, then he's saved from everything. Which Taisus asks, he says, how is the person saved from everything? But he's not saved from the Eight Sahara at a time when he's not actually learning Taira. You told me that you're only Magna Matzla when you're learning Taira. You said, yeah, it'll protect when you're not learning Torah, but to, to save you from the Yitzhar, we said, by Dergen Achitayful, it doesn't save you. How you Nitzel Mekulam if you Zecha to have a Shema Yitzel Yibad HaChazam? He says, Tais is very important words. He says, Stam Tamul Chachem, Tairasai Umanasai, the Torah is his profession, Ve'oisikba, he toils in it, Umahara Kol Shah, and he thinks about it at all times, Ve'ina Hoylech Da'alad Amas Bolei Torah. A true Tamul Chachem doesn't go Da'alad Amas without learning Torah. And therefore, He's, he's going to be Nitzel Mekulam because he's always be in the Dasigba. He's always a hot mitten learning wherever he is, whenever he is. And therefore, that's why that Pshat holds that if it's a Tamukhacham Shmaitzel, there's a Sokol Shmaitzel, but the Hokhazam, be Nitzel Mekulam. Now, going back to another phrase we mentioned also, we said, Dava Acher, another Mahalach of contrasting the Avera and, a, and a, I mean, between the Mitzvah and Torah. One was the Pasuk of Kine Mitzvah Torah. Another one we said, Dava Acher, Avera Mechab Mitzvah. Meaning, extinguishing, we're using that terminology because we're talking about an air and an er. We said, yeah, a sin can extinguish a mitzvah. But a sin does not extinguish the reward of having learned Torah. 
So Amar Yisav, he says, Darshe Rebbe Nachem Rebbe Yisav Lahai Kroki Sina. He expounded this Pasuk of Kinei Mitzvah Torah Or, that a, a mitzvah is like a net that it can be extinguished. But Or, you can't, the light itself, you can't extinguish. It, it, it's not something that has mamoshes. It's the light itself. So he expounded it like mamash, like by Har Sinai. But he says, Vil Moli Dar Shua Doig V'achitoifel Hochi had Doig and Achitoifel, who we mentioned before, who became Rishoyim. Uh, who were the enemies of David? Had they darshan this pasuk like this, they would not have chased after David, because dechsev it says a pasuk in Tehillim lamer to say, ah, oh, elikim azavayvegoimer, God has forsaken him. That's what they said regarding David, that God for, for, uh, had forsaken him because he had relations with a married woman, and we're not going to get punished for chasing and pursuing David. So they said, Radfu v'tavsu, okay, matzal, go run after him and grab him because no one's going to save him. He has no merits to be saved because the sin that he did extinguished all his merits. Says the Gemara, my, I mean, and had they expounded that like, like, like uh, Rabbi Nachem Rabbi Yisi, that he said that no, Dabra <laughs> Melch had the schos that uh, his Aveh will not extinguish it. So had they dashed like that, they would not have pursued But my dogs, what did they expound? So they expounded the Pasuk in the Varim says, should not be seen by you uh, this sin. And if it is seen by you, the Pasuk says, God will turn away from you. So they figured, hey, God's not going to protect David anymore because he did a Dvar Erva. But they didn't know, a sin will extinguish a mitzvah. A sin, even that of Eish Hashish, will not extinguish the schus that a person has. Now, says the Gemara, we, another passage we had previously mentioned was, Mayim Rabim la Yuchlu When it comes to Torah, the, 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 that Dabe Achra, Ein Aver Mechabe Torah said, Shunem, it says in the passage, Mayim Rabim la Yuchlu l'chav v'sahava, even many words can extinguish the love when the person learns Torah. Now, the end of the passage says that if a person will give all the money he has for this love, Boiz du vuzuloi. He's going to be surely disgraced and, and, and shamed. So what does this mean? So Amar Ule says, meaning, who is the brother of which, that he's a Tana, that's mentioned in the first mission of the Zvachim. Because since he learned Tyre, because he was supported by his brother, because he was a businessman, and he divided the schus of the learning of his brother Shimon. So therefore Shimon, when he's mentioned in the, in the Mishnayis forever, He's mentioned uh, based on his brother Azariah. So he's called Shimon Achi Azariah. So not like Shimon Achi Azariah. But like Rabbi Yechanan the Nasi, and neither like Rabbi Yechanan who was able to learn because the Nasi supported him. Ela Kehil Veshavna. What are we saying that you're going to be disgraced if you're going to try to get the love of Tyra? We mean like Hil and Shavna. Because the Chiyasr Abdimi Ame says, Hil Veshavna, Achi Hava. They were brothers. Hil Asik Batayra. We know the Gemara says in Yuma Dav Lama Heyam Beis. He'll, he learned Torah from a great poverty. He had very little money. He took half of it to put bread on the table, half to pay the shoimer to get into the base of Medrash. One day it was very cold and he didn't have any money. He was on the top and he froze in the snow. He'll learn Torah. Now Shabna, Avadiska, his brother Shabna, was a businessman. Let's say, if at the end, his brother becomes the God Lador, the famous hill. He says, look, let's go, let's divide, let's mix it together and divide, meaning... You know, let's pull together our resources. You have Ruchnius, I have the Gashmis. Let's split it. You'll get half my, my, my Famagan and I'll get half your Tyre. The Yatza Baskov Amr, Heavenly Voice, came in and said this Pasik. Im Yitinishas, call Hain Baisa Begoyim. If he's going to give all his Famagan, all his resources, and everything he has, Baisi Vuzla, they're going to disgrace him, meaning it's too late. You can't say, ah, oh, uh, grace, uh, grace of God will come, I'll split with you. No, no, no. This is when you're from the beginning, from the get go, there's a brother that wants to learn Teira, and you support him, then, or some Tamachachem, that's when the person has the opportunities to go ahead and support. But later on, I don't care how much you're going to give, you're not going to be able to get the Shos HaTeira. Now the Mishnah says, that we're going to turn to Amit Beis, that Amit said, Chai v'odim l'lamed is v'chulu. A person has to teach his daughter Teira, as we said, because that the daughter should know that in the event that she has to drink, that she wouldn't question the Torah, that she would know that the reason why she's not dying right away is because of the schus that she has. And she'll only know that if she learned Torah. Rabbi Yazayim, he says, no, he's teaching her znos. Now, interesting, the Torah brings from the Yerushalmi, 
that uh, Ben Azai is not like Rabbi Lazar Ben Azariah. Rabbi Lazar Ben Azariah dashes the Gemara Chagiga. Hakel es ha'am ha'noshem ha'noshem ha'taf. Why do you bring all those people to Hakel? The men come to learn. The women come to hear. So he says it would seem that the mitzvah is for the women to hear so that they know how to fulfill the mitzvah, not to know that the schus is Torah. Like we said, we said, interesting, by Ben Azai was like, he says, that's what they should know. They should learn Torah so they should know that, that the schus is, is Torah, that uh, he held that, no, that they should actually hear. And um, Taisa brings an interesting story that there was a noble woman that asked Rabbi Lazar, why is it that there was one sin by the Maisa Egel, but the Yidden died in three different types of deaths. So those who got strangulated, the girls who died, my gave. So he said to her, The woman's wisdom is only in the spindle. I mean, like, get out of it. Don't ask Don't ask me these questions. So Horkinus, his son, said to him, Because you didn't respond to this woman one word from the Torah, I lost 300 core of Meister every single year because she used to give me. Now you said you gave her this remark. You know, the Rav has to be careful. He says one bad word, that's it. He lost a whole uh, big donor to the, to the shul. So he said, Yisrifu. He, 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 uh, he, says, he says that, yeah, let it, let it, it doesn't make a difference. He says, you don't give over Dibri Torah to women. He says, I don't care how much uh, it's going to get burnt over here and get lost. He says that, uh, like the Rav Ransberg says, this was the Isha Hashuva who gave her maestress 300 core every single year to Horkinus, the son of Rebbe Laza. And now that Rebbe Laza pushed, him, pushed her away, so she stopped giving this donation. He says, we don't teach Tyra to women. So he says, I don't care that she's asking. So um, again, there's grace that you say this in that, in Isha, in Chachmal Isha El because women actually put things together. Gemara is actually the, the art of pulling things apart. As Schwab says, many things like, Pelech, I mean, put it together. And these questions are all teasing apart. It's not the kayach of a woman. Kayach of a woman is ma'achid. Kayach of a man is, is, to, is to separate. Is to, that's the whole brisk of mahalik, is to differentiate and individuate. That's, that's the response. But, so the Gemara asks on this, that Rebbe Leza says, whoever teaches his daughter Torah is like teaching her tiflis. Says the Gemara, tiflis You think Torah is, 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 is tiflis, like you're teaching her um, uh, some, something inappropriate? El Emer rather said, no, ke'ilulim the tiflis. Why? Because when she's going to learn Torah, she's going to understand how to be crafty. And she's actually going to do inappropriate things, but she's going to do it discreetly. I mean, a woman is usually very tamimistic. She doesn't know, you know, to be deceptive, you know, doesn't know what's the right, what's the wrong. So she's going to ask. But if you're going to teach her Torah, she will become a falamd of it, and, and, and then she's going to start doing the inappropriate things, but She's just going to know how to be discreet about it. So therefore, don't teach your daughter Torah. Uh, Amr B'voy says, My time of the Rebbe Lezer. So what's the reason of Rebbe Lezer that he says this? Because the Chesim says, the Pasuk and Mishli, Ani Chachma. The Torah says, I am wisdom. Shachanti Arma. I dwell in, the, in craftiness. Meaning, Once wisdom enters a person, So then, being crafty and deceptive enters a person. Meaning, yeah, you're, you're very smart, and, but it also, you know, could be with the kayacha the other way also. So, Rabbanan says the Gemara, but according to Ben Azai, or the others who say that you should learn, teach your, your daughter Torah, So, what do they do with this Pasuk? I thought it sounds like that armor comes in, you shouldn't be teaching her Torah. So, says the Gemara, they teach something else from this Pasuk. says, The words of Torah are not do not remain, do not last. Only someone that makes himself arm on them. So what does that mean? So Rashi brings two interpretations. Either that he separates himself from all types of business and he makes himself like a pauper and like he has nothing and only then will he be able to uh, maintain the words of Torah. Or what he means to say is that he's ma'arim on them. Meaning he's crafty. Then his Torah will remain, meaning, as the Gemara tells us elsewhere, that if he gathers a little bit at a time, at a little bit at a time, and to learn from every single person, I mean, you've got to be crafty, you got to, because the Yetzirah is always fighting you, uh, not to learn, it's too much, it's too this, the daf goes too fast, or whatever, and like, you have to be able to like, get him slowly, slowly, you know, the, the, that's who wins the race. 
That's the only way you have Tarsh. Now, Mike says, in the Pasuk, I'm smart, and in me dwells Orma, whether it means Orum or whether it means like Mirma. Now, Amr Bichne says, in the return Miskaimen, the words of Torah do not last. Only by someone that makes himself like as if he's not. Shemak says the pasuk in Eiv, a chachman wisdom may ayin from nothing, meaning from someone who makes himself like nothing. Timati, that's where you're going to find the words of Torah only by a truly humble person. Now the Mishnah then continued. Reb Shua Eimer he said that roitzi uh, isha b'chulu, a woman would prefer a kav and tiflis. The nine kav without tiflis. And that's what we said. That's why you don't teach her Torah because she wants tiflis. And if you're going to teach her Torah, she's going to actually get tiflis in the wrong way. Now, re, 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 the, says the Gemara, my kama, what, what is he saying? This is what he's saying. A woman prefers a, a little bit of food, but she wants to have that she could have intimacy with her husband with that. And she would prefer that metishas kav and aparishas than having knowing kav and being separated from intimacy with her husband. Like that's what Rashi says. Therefore, it's not good for her to learn Torah because she's going to go ahead and, well, either because it, it gets in the way of tiflis or she's going to use it with tiflis, but be that as it may, a woman prefers intimacy and, um, and she would prefer very little she says, where are you? I never see you. He's like, what do you mean? I'm making money to buy you the gems and jewelries in the cars. He's like, no, I don't care. I don't see you. I don't. So that's what the Gemara says. A woman prefer a little bit, but spending intimacy than having nine times that amount and not having that. Which, Trace being to Rabbein Hananel, that a woman would prefer that her husband be a, a donkey driver and that he should be around every single week to give her her aina and only bring her a cob of wheat and not be a camel driver who goes very far away and doesn't give her aina, but only once every 30 days. So although he brings the reward, our ten, our nine kaven, but it's still dear to have the aina every single week, which places goes through the cheshbain, is another prayer also trying to figure out exactly the cheshbain of the ratio of nine to one, what's exactly the cheshbain. But the point is that this is what a woman prefer, and again, therefore, we, we don't teach her to Now, who are your aimer? The mission says that he used to say, once we introduced his teaching, so chaset shay to the chulu, that there were certain individuals that are what's called mavali oilam, that they, uh, they, they confound, they mix up the world, they destroy the world. So one of the cases was a chasid shait. So it says the Gemara, what's considered a, a pious person that's a fool, which taste brings from the Yashami, that if someone saw a child that's uh, bubbling in the river, and he says, oh, when I take off my tefillin, then I'll save him. And by the time he takes off his tefillin, the child dies, well, that's going to be a chaset shaita. Our Gemara says, the Kotava Itzibanara, a woman is drowning in the river, but they says, it's not appropriate to look at a woman if you're not fully dressed, and to save her, that is a chaset shaita, that's someone who's a chaset, a pious person, but he's a shaita, he's a fool. What's considered a, a wicked person that's crafty, that's cunning, so Amr Yechne says, Zahmatim Dvarvladain. This refers to someone who gives a taste of his words, he gives a little appetizer of his words to the judge. Before the other litigant comes to the dying. Now, once his words settle in the heart of the judge, it's very hard for him to remove those words. And that's why he's cunning. And he's wicked. Because he violates Lysisa Shemasha, which you now give be toying. You know, talk about it before the other litigant comes. But he's very cunning because, he, oh, he mentions in passing this and that, and the guy's already, his mind's already racing how this guy's right. Therefore, it's considered a Russia arm. Another Pshat Rebbe Voim, he says, listen, dinner l'ani. This refers to someone who gives a coin to a pauper, lahashlem loy masayim zuz, to complete that now he has 200 zuz. Ah, now that he has 200 zuz, he had 199 and now you gave him just one dinner, he has 200 now, he can't eat leket, and now the guy who gave him that one dinner says, sorry, I can't let you in, I have my, my relatives who, who, who couldn't use the leket, and they come to take it. So that guy was first, he's running, he's like, hey, 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 it's tzedakah. So how much do you have? 200, sorry, you can't come in now. So now, like, learn the Mishnah, Masech, pay you. Misha, Shlom, Masayim, Zuz, if someone has 200 Zuz, Le'itl, he's not take, leket, the gleanings, shikha, the forgotten bundles, the payah, the kwanafildum, the poor man's tithe. 
But holy misayim chaser dinner. If he had let's say one dinner less, up to hundred, I felt elef nice like kachas. You could even give him a thousand and one shot. Harizito, then he could take it. So this guy's a rasha arm because he's he's cunning, but he's a wicked person because he gives him this one dinner and he says sorry, you can't get. Rabbi maybe he gives a different shot. Zeh hamasi eitzah. This is someone who gives counsel, gives an idea. Limkar ben chasim mo'atim to sell when there's very little assets, which is a reference to a mission above a basta of Kavala Matesim and Beis. If someone dies, and he leaves over sons and daughters, when there's a larger estate, the Allah is that the sons inherit, and the daughters get fed from the estate. If there's a very small estate, the daughters get fed, and the sons have to go knocking on doors to get their food. Which the Amr Basim of Yechon, he says, if you say him, mu. But if the orphans, the, the sons went first, they went they sold when there's very little assets. Before the daughters could come to Bezdin, and that the Bezdin could go and give that small Nechasim in the estate of the daughters, if the sons beat them, what they sold, they sold. So if someone gives an idea to the son, says, quick, 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 go sell before your sisters get there to Bezdin, it's going to work, but that's a Rosh that's not what that's not what Bezdin wants. Abayam says another Pshat, he says, This is someone who gives an idea to sell the estate referring to What's this referring to? We learned the price. If someone tells someone, he says, Look, he says, I'm passing on my, this, my, my, my properties to you, but after you, it goes to the other person. Now, the first guy goes down to that property, he sells it and he consumes the, the produce of this of sale. So the town of for holds that the second guy could take it away from the ones who are buyers, the Rebbe, because he said, after you go to this other person, that other person has to ultimately get it. He can't sell it. It says, no. The second guy only has what the first guy left over. Appropriate would be that you use it and then after it, give it to the second guy. But if he, if he sold it, if he used it up, then it's used up. The second guy won't get it from the So if someone goes to this first guy and says, look, chaparayim, Sell it because Shemuel holds the second guy won't get anything. You're a Russia arm because that's not what the guy wants. The guy wants that the second guy should get it. And therefore, if you give that advice, you're a Rosh arm. Rabbi Yitzhak Bachamam Rav Sheshe says, Zamachriya Acher Bar This is someone who tries to get people to follow in his own path. Meaning, it sounds like a little kid, but the way Rashi's words are, Look at me and do like me, you know. And go in the way I'm doing it. Which Rashi explains, this guy is intention is only trying to show himself like a chassid in the eyes of other people. But he doesn't have techikabare. Versus in the Rosen, what's on the outside, kiktos a great sudeba, a great sudeba But the inside is not like that. He just doesn't want people to look and check into really how ab- abominable he is. So that's a, someone who's a Rasha Aram. He tries to get others to look like, do like him. He says, oh, you're a great Avoida. And, and really, he's just like, people are just following whatever he does. That's a Rasha Aram. Rabbi Zeko Amar Rav, when he says, Zeha mekel a Rasha Aram is someone that's lenient for himself, but he's stringent for others. You know, for the kids, he says, no, matunish, you don't do this, you're not allowed to look at this. And then he has all his gadgets, everything he has everything in his room, isn't that? This is a Rasha Aram. This is, this is a cunning, wicked person because, yeah, you're, you're right. That's why he's Aram, but he's a Rasha because for himself, he's Mekel. Ulama, he says, and this is the last shot, Zaz, you get of Chabezim and Aleph, Shakara, he learns Chumash, Vishana, he learns Mishnais, but Shimish Tamidi Chacham, but he didn't serve Tamidi Chacham to learn the Svara of Gemara for the reasonings of the Mishnais, what they are. He's a Rasha. Because his Torah is not clear, and you can't learn from him. Because it's through the reasonings, the rationales, the understanding that you have a differentiation between what's mutter and what's usr, and regarding monetary law, what will merit and what will find guilty. And by taharis to say what's tam and what's tar, as we say in many places in the Shas, my time, why did he say it like this? Why did he say it like this? And the Gemara says, my benayu, ik benayu, kach vakach. Because you have to know, if you don't know, even if you know the halacha, if you don't know the underpinning logic, then you're not going to know how to compare it. So therefore, that's a rasha. And he's arum, he's cunning, because someone who hears him learning Mishnayis thinks, wow, psh, this guy really knows his stuff. And they're going to treat him with honor like a tamachach, when really, he doesn't really know the depth of it, and therefore, he's considered as a rasha arum. Thank you to any time. Those things.